Good morning, it's David Rizzo with Rogers Gardens and today we're going to talk about July in the garden. And so we're going to go over, over everything from what we're planting this time of year, trimming, um, insect control, and um, more drought tolerance. And I'll talk a little bit more about water and about mulching too. But I want to go over um, a few things before we start. And um, right now we're doing the hummingbird program. So we have all the hummingbird plants in up front. We still have the milkweed for the monarch. So all that stuff is, is in. So um, come in, check it out. And um, so let's start. And, and the one thing too, before I really get going, um, this year has been a really interesting year. We've had a really cool spring into summer a little bit but we're starting to heat up now which is good but we're still getting some cool mornings and some hotter afternoons but the weather's finally feeling more like summer because we really did have a cool spring this year so i know a lot of people are asking me well why isn't this growing and why why are the plants slower because it just hasn't been hot so a big difference in temperatures when you're 75 80 degrees in the day and your 60s at night that's when plants really take off but when you're 60s in the day and 58 59 at night um, plants will actually stay really they won't push a lot of growth so that's why some of the plants are a little bit later that's why we're still seeing the roses um, really starting to push their flowers we're still seeing a lot of the geraniums starting to come back in so that's the one thing we're really about a month out this year than we were say last year because usually may warms up but um, this even June wasn't even that warm but now we're into July so it's starting to warm up so um, let's start off with the vegetables first so I get a lot of questions about is it too late to plant tomato plants and which 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 one should I I buy the main thing with tomato plants right now is it too late yes and no if you're doing tomatoes right now you're putting them in you want to go with early varieties so you don't want to do really late varieties so I'm, anything I'm planting right now is going to be 65 days, 70 days, or under. So I'm not doing any of those heirlooms right now because the heirlooms are 85 to 90. So that's the ones you want to put in in, in uh, March and mid-April um, because they take so long. So that's important. So the big heirlooms, the, the late varieties, plant them early. Don't plant them right now. So um, some of the varieties I brought up just to show you, Sun Gold Cherry, one of my favorite gold cherries. Love this variety. Uh, another Sun Gold uh, medium slicing tomato from Japan. Momotaro is a good one. Um, one of my favorites, and we, we did get them back in, and we're sort of short um, short supplying them, but I love chocolate sprinkles. This is a good little, like, purple-black grape tomato, so that's a good one. So um, get them in the ground. Get them going. Um, watch them for caterpillars. You know, watch them for caterpillars. I'll usually use, like, an organic, like, let me grab, let me grab some of my... I like using BT. So BT is a good one if you're spraying for caterpillars, and they're going to get really bad as we go into July and August. So once a month, hit them now, another three weeks, spray again, another three weeks, spray them again. This is an organic bacterial disease called Bacillus thuringiensis. It doesn't hurt any other insects or animals, only caterpillars. So that's for um, the hornworms and the stuff that's really going to chew on, on your plants. Um, another thing that I always talk about, now that some of you guys have had your tomatoes in for a while, calcium. Make sure you're giving them enough calcium. Whether you put down gyp, gyp like not gypsum, but um, what am I think of? Oyster shell meal or fish bone meal, any of that. Get a good source of calcium in there for it to break down. If you don't, I do use sometimes the um, the the, um, the uh, cow the cow mag. That's what it is. I always forget what. It, I use cow mag sometimes, um, and it's a liquid form that I water in to give the calcium, especially. The Roma tomatoes and some Marizanos, they need more calcium to develop fruit. So that's with um, tomatoes. So other plants that we're gonna be putting in this time of year, your heat lovers. So eggplant, Japanese eggplant, putting them in. The uh, Black Beauty eggplant, I'm putting them in. Um, eggplant are growing like pep they're growing like peppers, so just make sure full sun, put them about two feet apart, fertilize them really good. I always feed my two favorite fertilizers that I always I, is oh, did the Bluetooth go out? We're good. Did it go out? I'm going to I'm gonna take this off then if the Bluetooth... No, it, we're good. Oh, is it going? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Okay, that was... Okay, so uh, fertilizing for all the vegetables. Bios Alive is a really good one. This has more mycorrhizae, really good. I really like the all-purpose because it's good calcium. So peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, feed them. Keep feeding them. And what I do, feed when you plant. 
right now I'll fertilize everything, I'll feed again, but once the fruit starts setting, I don't feed anymore, so that's important. So what else do we got over here? Eggplant put in uh, peppers, I still go with peppers. We've been having a hard time getting um, the sweet peppers, but I got Anaheim's, I got um, Thai, the, the Thai peppers, I got Shishito's, um, what's this one? This is Serrano, I love Serrano. Serrano's are my favorite pepper for making salsa, so those are really good, love Serrano's. Um, so plant your peppers now, give them a little room when you plant them, don't crowd them, and um, keep feeding them and watering them, but get them in the ground now, don't wait. Um, all your pumpkins, so the jack-o'-lanterns you plant now, they're the medium-sized pumpkin, seven to 10 uh, pounds. Um, you do have the Big Macs. Big Macs are huge pumpkins, 100 to 200 pounds. If you do grow some of them, you gotta understand these plants get huge. They might cover an area 20 by 20. So if the size of your garden is big enough, you can put them in, but definitely watch the size on them. Um, what else do we have? Are these little guys? Um, yeah, these are, um, want to see the other squash so yeah so with pumpkins keep planting the pumpkins right now um, even your zucchini too so this is oh, these are cucumbers plant cucumbers cucumbers sometimes are short-lived as a plant so put them in water them really good if it's really hot where you're at put them in a little bit of shade because sometimes you really got to watch how hot your area is because cucumbers don't like it really really hot so a lot of water um, if you get a good harvest and after 40, 50 days, um, take them out and plant new ones. So this is a little good one called Patio Snacker. So plant that cucumber. Uh, there's pickling cucumbers that I had. I don't know what I did with them, but I, I uh, didn't bring them up. So yeah, but cucumbers, um, not such heavy feeders, consistent water. That's important with them. Good water. Watch them for the mildew. Um, what are the heat levers? Oh, you got, we did get in some sweet potatoes, and this is really cool. This is a Japanese sweet potato called An. Um, sweet potatoes grow like potatoes. They vine and they root underground, and they do take long. You know, they'll take over 100 days, sometimes 170 days. So if you plant them right now, they're going to vine, keep them well watered, and you'll harvest them in fall. So sweet potatoes, that's, and if you ever get into growing your own sweet potatoes, you take a sweet potato, you put it in water, you let the shoots or the slips grow up. You take those, pop those slips off and you plant them in the ground and they root. So that's a um, trick with planting sweet potatoes. Um, so that's it with, with the veggies. Um, seeds too, let me go through seeds really quick. Um, seeds, we have all the seeds. So your pumpkins, your zucchini. Another one that I've been having a hard time getting plants of lately is spaghetti, squash, and butternut. Don't wait, plant the seeds. Plant The seeds will take about seven to 10 days to come up. This is called Waltham, and then this is just regular spaghetti squash, so plant them. Um, some of the, the, the kibacha, um squash, um, if we don't have plants, seeds. So, and even like the little white pumpkins, if you guys want to go over the luminous, plant the seeds. Um, and then even like some of the little eight ball squash that come from France, like the round, the round zucchinis are really good. Seed, uh, Max's Gold Zucchini. Um, the yellow varieties of zucchinis have a thinner skin that's really good, so like those. Um, you can do all your melons right now. There are seeds of, um, this is a little good variety called Minnesota Midget, which is a little baby cantaloupe. That's a good one. Um, you can do all your watermelons. We're sort of low on watermelons, but I, I do have some sugar babies. Sugar babies are a seedless variety and they're an ice box watermelon eight to ten pounds watermelons need a little bit more heat so sometimes if you're a little off the coast you'll do better with them on the coast they can be tricky if your if your garden's in a hot area you should be fine but they do like heat uh beans are another one too that we're starting to bring in so i got a lot of seeds i have a few plants like kentucky wonder um got a really good variety that's emery right which is a really good french filet hard caught that's a good one you have little bush varieties um I do bush beans a lot because I know I'm going to get good harvest and they only get a foot and a half to two feet tall. So I do bush a lot. Um, these are pole, but if you do the poles, put up a good trellis, get them to climb, um, and just keep watering. That's the main thing. Uh, moving on with some of the other ones. It's it's getting later, but if you can find good strawberries, Chandler is a good ever-bearing one. So grab Chandler's, plant Chandler's right now, give them a lot of water. I never plant um, carrots by color packs even though we bring them in 
The problem with carrots, they they twist and you'll never get a good straight carrot. So when you grow carrots or even beets, don't buy the transplants, buy the seeds. So I get some good I get some good seeds like this is um, Bolero. Uh, this one is one of my favorites, Red Court, uh, Red Court Chatneys. Um, but don't wait to plant like any of your root crops, whether it's radishes, beets, or carrots. Seed them right now before it gets too hot, because when we go more into July and it gets too hot, um, they're not going to germinate good. So plant them right now so you get a, you get a summer harvest with your carrots. Um, beets are good, like early wonder. This is one of the best juicing varieties. One of my friends used to juice a lot, and this is the one he used for juicing. Um, and then you got the little rainbow, the little rainbow uh, beets that are like more of the uh, Chioga's Italian candy stripes. So plant those right now. Um, and um, you have other corn, corn you're going to put in right now. Corn, plant it in blocks. Um, so when you plant corn, don't put it close together. Put one here, one here, one here, one here. So a square block about 12 to 14 inches apart. That helps them pollinate better. Where if you crowd them, there you're not going to get the pollen. It's going to drop the silks. You're going to get empty um, ears of, of kernels. One of my favorites from seeds, Casino. Do Casino. That's a very good one. This is a little dwarf variety. It comes from Renee Shepherd Seeds, and you'll get two ears per stalk. So that's a good one to do. Um, you can do your your bunching onions right now. Your little scallions. They're good to do right now. You can plant those. Um, so that's pretty much the core for the veggies. Um, any questions, just come in and see me, but think summer. Like even right now, it's gonna get it's gonna get really hot for the lettuce and for the arugula and stuff. So that can be tough. If, you, if you're doing other plants, you might look at putting them in shade, but they're very short-lived as we get into the 80s and 90s in some of the areas. So moving on, let me set this back so I don't knock it over. <laughs> so herbs. This is herb season, so as we get hotter, all your herbs are coming in. So some of my favorites that I always will do is basil. I love making pesto. I love doing, using this on my pizza, so I like the big sweet basil. So I always will pinch it off and look at these leaves. And one thing I always look for, when you smell the leaves, you sort of crunch the leaves up, the, the really good sweet basils are always going to have more of that clove smell. There, there are some basils that have more of a black licorice, like an anise. They're good too, but they're not going to have that pungent uh, flavor. So good with the sweet basil. And I didn't bring all of them up, but we got Thai basil in. We got at, like some of the African blue. We got holy basil or the, the Tulsi for making tea. So we're getting all the basils in right now. So now's the time for them. Plant them. Watch them for snails and slugs. If we do, if you guys are really having a problem with snails and slugs, um, use a sluggo. Sluggo is an organic bait that you can use around pets and animals. This is an iron phosphate. It's not a methaldehyde base. When you get into some of the other slug baits, don't use them around your herbs and vegetables because this is the one you want. Iron phosphate sluggo. That's a good one. So moving on with herbs. French tarragon. Plant it. Let's get a plant right now. There's a thyme that we finally got, and um, it's called pizza thyme. So it's a variety of English thyme and a really good flavor. Uh, lemon verbena. I love this plant. I always pinch them, and I put the I put it in green tea. So love lemon verbena. This was a really different variety of parsley we got. It's called um, Ven Ven Venudii fern leaf. So this is actually a parsley. So you got to come in and check this out. That's a cool one. Um, Mexican oregano, one of my favorite oreganos for putting on pizzas. Now that it's getting hotter, I'm making a lot of pizzas. Um, the chamomile, Cam if you guys make your own tea, you cut the flowers off and you steep that. So that's the, the Roman chamomile. Stevias, um, stevia is good, but the one thing with stevia is you can actually pick off the leaves and dry it and then use it to the, um, boil it and then make a little syrup out of it for a sugar substitute, but stevia doesn't last long. So keep trimming it and um, harvest it. Doesn't last long though, so you gotta replace it. The Moroccan mint. This is one of my other favorite mints. This is a sweet spearmint, and I love to grow this. Green tea again, but with mint, don't put mint in the ground. Put it in a little terracotta pot. Use a good pot and soil, like Malibu pot and soil that drains, but mint in pots. Don't do it in the ground. It will take over your garden. Cilantro. Cilantro this time of year, it's not 
going to last as long because cilantro likes cooler weather, not heat. So put it in a little shade, trim it. You always want to trim it just above the new growth. And sometimes you'll get about a month out of it. But I, I plant it, trim it, trim it, trim it. And then when it dies, yank it out and plant more because it will go to seed really quick. doesn't like the heat. Uh, your perennial herbs you can put in right now, your onion chives, your spice island rosemary, really good. Another thing that I, um, I like this time of year is we get in all the English lavenders. This is a really good one. This is called Layla Presto Blue. So very fragrant. You can make little sachets. You can do lemon. You can do the lavender water, lavender tea, but this is a good one. So that comes from a, a grower in San Diego. Parsley, you get your, your giant Italian flat leaf. That's good right now. So get your herbs in, water them in good. Um, if you do herbs in containers though, don't, don't do such a shallow container. I always see people that do a little container this deep. Try to do 10 to 12 inches deep. Try to do 10, 15, 20 inches wide, but always go deeper on these herbs because they want to root down and they want to have that water like the soil that will hold more water if you put them in little containers you're going to struggle with them so herbs as we get hotter plant them in bigger containers don't do small containers and you don't really need like a really high phosphorus fertilizer you can just use a starter or any any fertilizer to use in terms of uh, nutrients but they're not fruiting so they don't need a lot of nutrients so that's with the herbs so now what we're gonna do we're gonna swap it out I'm Sabrina so we're gonna swap this out here we go here we go so we're gonna put some of the flowers up on the top and we're gonna move some of the herbs and I'm gonna do I'm gonna actually move it move it again and let me get the other stuff I only have such a little table so we got to work with what <laughs> what we have so here you go Doing the big some move. of the um, some of the annuals and now so now we're really going into the warm season annuals let me move this and i'm gonna i'm gonna have to come over here more i'm gonna move this off there too we're just shifting everything around so okay so now let me put this on the table this is the perennials so herbs and the vegetables over there so now you're really going to go into your warm season annuals so right now you're going to do all your celosias good hot weather annuals yeah, the celosias are great bloomers. Full sun, heat. You're gonna do your cosmos. This is Sonata. Oh, the ambulance is going by. Uh -huh. You guys can hear me. There and uh, phlox, plant right now. Good one, good one to bloom all the way through summer. And these are annuals, so they'll bloom all the way to about October. And then they'll finish, reseed, and die out. So a lot of water on them, um, but not, um, not along the plant, more annual. This actually is a good one, Gomprina. This can be more of a perennial, so this is a little bit, uh, but taller, great variety. This is um, just cut flower orange. Usually there's strawberry hue. There are some different types. You have the Veronica, oh, Victoria Blue Salvia Annual, good one to use. Another good one is the Vista White. That's another good little annual salvia. The Vincas I love. So Vincas like the heat. Full sun, hot weather. We're starting to get our, let me see if I can get these out. The zinnias are coming in. So plant the zinnias. Zinnias love the heat. Now, um, you can still plant your, your, your marigolds. Marigolds are good right now. Um, and so that's annuals. I didn't bring up a lot of shade annuals, but you can do begonias and impatiens, and then New Guinea impatiens and fuchsias. And those are more morning, sun, afternoon shade. So moving on out of the annuals, now, one of my favorite categories, and there's so many plants in this category, um, are the perennials. So you have pollinating perennials, you have like all kinds of them. So one of my favorites, I love nasturtiums. So we're getting the variegated nasturtiums. This is the edible flower. So if you guys get into growing your own nasturtium flowers for eating, for salads, this one's it. Um, you have some of the angelonias. This is another one of my favorites. These are called summer snapdragons. They come in whites and, and burgundies and pinks and purples. This is a great one. This will bloom all the way into October, November, and then you'll yank it out and put your winter stuff in. But great summer flower for a little height. They get about a foot, foot and a half. So love the angelonias. Those are good to plant right now. I always like nemesias, and I know a lot of people don't really know much about nemesias. This is such a good little perennial 
Sometimes this can last three to four years. I put it around rose gardens. Uh, good little plant. You do got to watch it for the bunnies, though. The bunnies can sort of go after them. So watch it for the bunnies. But love Nemesis because they're fragrant and they're really good rebloomers. Let's put some of the, the Daniels back. And so moving in onto the perennials. Another group of flowers that I love are the Gara. Garas make a taller plant, and they can get anywhere from a foot to two foot by three by three. Um, they come in white, they come in pink, darker pinks, but I love the Garas. The Garas are great for blooming all through summer. So you even get, there is even, I don't think I brought it, oh, this is one right here. Some of the varieties that are sort of a, a white with a pink highlight along their flower, this one is called Rosy Jane, so it has little highlights of pink. This is another good gold, uh, pink one right here, Belizea Dark Pink, so a little bit deeper pink. That's a good one. Um, what else do we have? Um, the little uh, uh, Philotus or the Joey plant, that's another good little perennial for summer. One of my favorites, and we don't always get it, we have some now, so come in and grab them. I love the cat mint. So cat mint, don't confuse it with catnip. So catnip is what they feed to the cats. They're in the same family. This is cat mint. So this is a uh, junior walker, which is another variety of nepeta. They get really wide. They don't get really tall, but they bloom the little flowers in spring. This year's a little later, so we're doing them in summer, but oh, I love the cat mint. So that's a good one to do. Um, we're starting to get in some of the, the cone flowers, the purple. This is another one of my favorite plants. Uh, they go really dormant during the winter. This is echinacea, purple cone. I got some really nice four inch ones. So come in and grab them. I'm getting some good monkey flowers. So the Mimulus, this one's called uh, Mai Tai Red. That's a good one. Um, we're getting in Rutabekias now. Some little Rutabekias, this is Indian summer. In another month, I should have more of the flowering. We're a little later this year, but yeah, get the little ones and just plant them. You got Platy Cohen, the balloon flower, you know, that's a good one. Great summer, can take some shade. And so what else do we have? So that's really with some of the perennials, and there's so many more, but now we're getting into the heat lovers. So all the heat lovers. Um, another thing that I, I'd like to talk about too is more of the more of the pollinating perennials. So I'm gonna go into more of the pollinators. So let's move, we're gonna shift more stuff off the table, <laughs> and we're gonna put up the one gallon stuff. Actually, you know what I can do? I could probably just, um, I can just bring it over here. I'm just gonna move this, and I'm gonna bring the card over here. And then I'll just pull them off the cart. That's probably easier to do. So these are more of the um, perennial. Can you see me in the picture, though? Let me see if I can pull them apart. Yeah, okay. you're all good. And so now we're going into the perennial pollinators. And so the pollinators can be for uh, bee pollinators, and they can be for hummingbird, and they can be for butterfly. I brought up a lot because when we go into summer, this is the big time of year we get all the hummingbird pollinators. So all the hummingbird pollinators. And the hummingbird pollinators are flowers that will have a longer, more of a skinnier flower, and the nectar can sit in the back of the flower, and they can really get that nectar out of the flower. One of my favorites that I really like, I love these agastaches. They call these a hummingbird mint. So love them. They have a real pungent odor. I used to grow them in the desert. The hummingbirds love them. So I have this one. This is called Kudos Ambrosia. It's more of a peachy, pinky color. That's a good one. Um, this is a little dwarf variety, and this is called uh, Better Buzz Amber. Good one. Um, so Agastaches, um, you go into Penstemons too. So love Penstemons. This is a variety, um, this is Compactum. So this is Penifolius, Penifolius from Native Sons. This is a good one too for the hummingbirds. Um, then you got some of the regular Penstemons. Um, so this one is um, Garnet. So Garnet's that more of that burgundy, but oh, they, they love them. So into some of the other ones, Salvias too. I didn't bring up a lot of Salvias, but Salvias are another one that they really love. So when you get into Salvias, this is just the Hummingbird, uh, the Hummingbird Sage, which is a good one. Uh, but you have the, the Greggy Eyes, you have so many varieties of Salvias. I didn't really bring that many of them up though. But look at all the salvias. And even, um, did I bring up, oh, okay, I'll, I'll talk about those in a minute. But this is another good variety of pensament from Native Sons. Catherine D. D. La Mary. This is a good one. This is sort of like, a, almost like a margarita bop type. Good, good, almost native, so that's good. Um, 
And then moving forward into the kufias, I love the little cigar plants. They, the hummingbirds love this. This is called uh, uh, compact um, cherry bells, which is a good one to use. Um, what else we got? Oh, and then I brought up some more of the bigger, um, the bigger uh, milk, the bigger uh, monkey flowers. This variety is uh, burst berry. These get a little bit bigger. They're going to get three to four feet. More of a perennial, great native. So love the mimulus of the monkey flower. There is a peach orange variety, and this one is burst orange. Good one. And so these grow native a lot. You'll see them up in the central coast, up near like Morro Bay, and hummingbirds love them. So that's one. And then um, moving forward, I, I brought up a few of the butterfly plants too, like the yarrow. Um, I did get the milkweed. So one of the main, main milkweeds we, we carry, and let me grab a one gallon. This is a uh, fascicularis, so a Slepsius fascicularis. This is the narrow leaf. This is the one that we really grow and we really sell a lot of. This is the one that is one of the better milkweeds because one of the things with tropical versus native, and I hear it all the time, and there's always a big fight against them. A lot of people don't realize one of the main portions you do really don't want, a lot of the times with, with monarchs, you want them to migrate. You don't want them to stay around year round. Another problem is there's a parasite that's an amoeba, and the amoeba is really, they, they don't seem to be a problem in Mexico, but we have a lot of them here. The native helps purge that parasite, where the tropicals, it doesn't. So if you ever see monarchs where they're having a hard time um, flying, and I'll pick them up off the ground, I'll set them on a plant, and they're, 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 their wings aren't unfolding, they probably have the parasite. So keep your eyes out for that, but, um, Plant your milkweed, plant the native, and keep on going with that. You'll cut these back in fall. Um, as we get hotter, they're going to take off. Um, if you get yellow aphids on them, don't spray them. Just rub those little uh, yellow oleander aphids off. Don't spray them with anything because you'll hurt the monarchs on the plant. But now they're going to get active because we're getting hotter. That's the main thing. Um, other butterfly plants too. The, the buckwheat, this is a really good one. This is this is a Santa Cruz and San Miguel Island buckwheat. So this is a good one that the butterflies like. Um, what else do I have? Oh, the pentas. Pentas are another good one, like that. And so um, this is another good, this isn't really a native, uh, but it's just a good perennial for the bees and the butterflies. This is an English geranium called Roseanne. I love to plant these around roses. How are we looking on time? Are we looking on time? Um, probably about like 10, 12 minutes. Okay, so now I'm going to actually go into about, I'm going to go into some of the drought tolerant plants, um, and then I'll talk about mulching, and then we'll go into some of the um, hot watering, and I'll talk mulching and watering, and then I'll go into some of the insecticides and stuff like that. So let me grab, I'm going to walk over here off the screen for a minute. I'll be right back. <laughs> let me put these, I'm grabbing the, um, the more of the drought tolerant so these are some of my favorites uh, right here and I'm just gonna push it right here and hopefully it doesn't fall over okay I'm gonna move some of the more stuff off the table I always talk about a lot of stuff because I want to give you guys a lot of ideas on what we're what we're growing what we have and it's mainly to look at what we're planting for this time of year as we get hotter so that's really important but one of my favorite categories I love the drought tolerant plants so when, when we get hotter, we start getting all the landscape plants that are really drought tolerant, like, like leucodendrons. Leucodendron is a great plant. Leucodendrons will get the redder tips in spring and then again in fall, but leucodendrons are in the Portea family, not much water. Uh, they almost go like summer dormancy, but uh, no phosphorus too. Don't feed them. If you fertilize them, cottonseed meal, but don't feed them with any phosphorus. It can, it can really damage them. So that's a good one for big huge plant one of my other plants that this is really one I might say that a lot of plants are my favorites but this is really one of my favorites <laughs> it's like, but this is a in the Pertea family and these are called leucospermums leucospermums get yellow orange flowers sometimes pink sometimes rose and they usually have a very solid flower but they bloom spring up to summer and then fall up to winter but they don't bloom in summer so when you're when you're planting them, don't water them as much in summer because that's the dormancy. But I love planting them um, because they get so bushy, four to six, but all oh, the flowers are great on them. But yellow, oranges, but it almost like a plastic flower, a really cool flower. Um, uh -oh, uh -oh. We're dropping bags of soil. 
<laughs> Some of my other favorites, I like grevilleas. So the family of grevilleas are really big. This one is um, rosemaryifolia, which has little spiky, um, spiky little leaves, but it has little, uh, little red flowers, and the hummingbirds love this plant. So that's a good one to plant right now. Um, some of my other favorites, the wastrangias. So we're finally getting some really good wastrangias. Oh, this is this is a mint bush actually. This is Prosthenotheria variegata. So this is a really good one. And so with um, you got hebes that are really good. You plant right now that are drought tolerant. And this is the wastrangia, a little smoky, gets real wide. Um, let me talk quick about this. These other ones. So other drought tolerant plants that I love, Sharks Bay Baronia, great bloomer. Let me turn around so you can see the flower. Little pink flowers, that's a good one to use in your drought tolerant garden. Um, rock rose, love the cystus or the rock rose. These will bloom strong through summer, very drought tolerant, not much water. And so that's it with the drought tolerant plants. Um, you can always come in and ask me more about it because we're getting them now. I want to talk quick about mulching and about watering. So as we get hotter, I don't mulch my garden until we hit July. I mulch my rose garden, I mulch my, my, my uh, vegetable garden, I mulch everything. Mulching does two things. It helps keep the soil cooler and it helps retain the water. So you lose less water or evaporation. As we get hotter and we're 75, 80, 85, in some areas 90, 95, put down a good one to two inches of mulch. Keep it away from the trunks though. You can, you can use it up to the trunk, but don't plant, do it right against the trunk because sometimes you get rotting. There's different varieties of mulch um, in my garden. I like more of the, the shredded bark mulches or the really small mini mulch. So let me, let me take some of this down and then I'll bring some of the mulches up and I'll show you just the bags. So this is one of, I like this. This is cedar, this is just cedar mulch. So this is easy to use. Now, if you have big areas, the shredded mulches you'll always have to use more because they're loose, right? If you get into the mini, the mini mulches, this is one of my other favorites for doing big, big gardens and big areas. And you can walk on this too. This is called mini mulch. And the difference between this and the shredded is this is going to have little chips. And the little chips are going to allow the water to work through and you can walk on it. So if you're ever um, wanting it smaller, better, shred it better, but just use them, you know. And sometimes what I do in vegetable gardens, if I use shredded cedar in the veggie garden, I always put my compost and my worm castings underneath before I plant. So I'll get Malibu compost, I'll work it underneath, I'll put my worm cap because sometimes the wood will draw nitrogen as it breaks down. So that's very important if you're doing fruit trees and vegetable gardens. Before you mulch, fertilize, put a little compost, a little bit of worm castings, and lightly work it in so it doesn't rob any nitrogen away from your, your, your edible plant. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, and so, um, so that's mulching, and on the flip side, watering. So the one thing with watering, as we get hotter, um, water in the morning, I always water five to six in the morning, it's hard to tell you how frequently to water because it depends on where you're at and how hot it is. Um, some people say, well, how many times should I go a week and how many minutes? Generally, you got to look at it. You water on a Monday and say if you go four to six minutes. Check it on a, check it on a Wednesday. If it's still wet, wait till Friday. You always do, you're always checking and you're checking the soil about three to four inches down. Don't check on the surface, it's always gonna be dry. So if you have a moisture meter, push it you know, six inches down. That way you're reading the moisture down deeper. But it all depends on how hot you are, how windy you are, where you're at. So there's a lot of variables with irrigation. Another one that I didn't bring in, and we used to sell them, and I really do like them, um, but you'll find them at some of the irrigation places. They're a little sprinkler head called MP rotators. I love MP rotators. Now they can be hard to adjust, but uh, Hunter makes them now. Hunter is the company that makes them. We have them all out front in the landscape and they're very efficient with the water because some of the older sprinkler heads will water at two to five gallons per minute. 
the hunters or the MP rotators will, will water it half a gallon to a gallon per minute. So a lot less water, more of like a little gear driven sprinkler head that's on a ball bearing, but very efficient with the water. So look into MP rotators, that's a good one. So um, just talking about hoses and nozzles and I keep stuff pretty basic. Um, I do like this hose right here. This one is Flexzilla. Um, I'm going away from the lightweight hoses. I mean, and everybody's going to give me flack on this. I'm getting tired of the lightweight hoses because they kink. They, you have to, you have to keep them under pressure, or they don't work good. I'm going back to the old solid hoses. And what I'll do with this one when I, when I get it home, I haven't bought one yet, but my neighbor, my customer has one of these, and I love it. So you unravel the hose. You, you turn it on and you put it put a put a nozzle on the end you know you take the dram the dram nozzles I love you you close it and then what you do is you put it out you 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 unroll this and put it out in the sun and you let this hose soften out so it loses its memory but like the like the the soft hoses I don't like the light weights I'm sort of done with them so I think when I get home I'm gonna probably actually buy this and this is a 50 I think we have 50 75 so really good um, nozzles that I like I like stuff that, that's that's just easy like this has an easy on and off shut off um, I like the shower setting on this um, if you go to the let's see if you go to the um, Usually they have a, a position called soaker, but even like the shower hose, the, the key with watering when we get hotter, water slower, don't water so long. A lot of people water too fast. If you're watering all your containers, slow it down and water really thoroughly and sometimes water twice. You know, water down the row, let it soak in, come back and water again. Don't water so fast. That's when it's hot, but these dram nozzles are really good. I like them for the easy shut off. Um, another way, if... Um, you just want a good nozzle for water in the garden is what I do is I buy the the dram shower head this has a thousand holes and I just get the little shut off the little plastic shut off and then I just mount that to there and it's easy easy to use so good one to use good for watering um, we'll talk about we're gonna talk quickly about insects and then we're gonna go into um into uh, questions but another thing that I'll touch on really quick that I didn't really go into is pruning right now you want to light trim everything so roses if your roses are starting to finish out just light trim the flowers go about six to eight inches down if you have perennial salvias and they're finishing their bloom light clip them down so this is a good time of year to light clip and clean up the garden as we get hotter and stuff slows down and then fertilize and get ready when we go more into uh, mid mid to late summer so another thing light trimming and I always will fertilize if stuff's looking rough. We're a little late this year, but trimming and feeding, that's important with a lot of stuff, okay? And so moving on with, with, um, with insects and with problems. So I know this year's gonna be bad with mosquitoes. So I, I do like the little mosquito bits. These you can put in, in water, you can put them in the, on the ground. These are safe, it says right there can be used around people, pets, plants, and fish. So safe to use. This is actually a bacterial disease too. This is a form of, of BT. So when you look at it, Bacillus thuringiensis. So this is a good one to use if you have a problem with mosquitoes. Mosquito bits, this is one. And some people do like to plant. Lavender will keep them away, but you gotta crush the leaves for the oils. Lemon verbena, um, lemon geraniums, all that stuff can't keep them away because they don't like the smell. So that's with, um, that if your roses are getting fungal problems three and one this is one of the better fun, uh, fungicides don't use it during the heat of the day this will work for rust mildew so this is a good one i like using uh talked again about the um the caterpillars if the caterpillars are really bad on your geraniums the bud worms on your tomatoes the horn worms even on um on some of your other plants bt is a good one for for caterpillars so I'll spray it usually about every two weeks. I don't like to spray every week. I don't like to spray at all, but if I have a problem with something, I will spray once every two, three weeks. So that's a good one. Safe with dogs, safe with pets. Um, and then, where did I do with the other one? Oh. And then again, Sluggo. Sluggo is a good one for snails and slugs. We are going to have a problem this year because we had so much rain. So sprinkle it down lightly, but always clean up the leaves really good and sprinkle lightly. So when this breaks down and they cross it, 
the iron is toxic to them, but not toxic to anything else. So it actually puts iron back in your garden. So good to use, good to spray. I didn't um, bring up spinosad. Um, spinosad is good if you get the rose slugs on your your um, ro like um, on your roses. If you're getting leaf miner damage on your citrus, we'll talk about more about that. But come in if you guys have any questions about that. So that's it, June in the garden, um, and now question time. Yeah, so um, there wasn't too many questions. Okay. Um, there is one just on Facebook, and it says, what is the name of the hose again? That would be the oh, Flexzilla. This is, so this is, I love this hose. This is called Flexzilla. So I actually don't own one of these hoses, but one of my customers owns one. I love this hose, because it's a real soft weight hose, but it doesn't kink on you. And again, I like stuff that's lightweight, but I'm done with the lightweight hoses because they don't pressure up good. When, when you use these, they pressure up good, so then you get a good amount of water pressure out of your hose. The other ones, you have to put your nozzle back to, to create back pressure, and you don't get the, you don't get the flow or the, the, um, the water rate, but I love these. Yeah, Flexzilla. This is uh, 5 8 50 foot, so good one. Good one. Come in and buy them. Use them, but definitely um, I buy them now because when we go into summer, we're going to sell out of them. Perfect. Okay. That is all it. We'll be posting these on our social media. And if you have okay. any other questions, you can always give us a comment or anything like that or come in store. Yeah, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you if come in, if you have any, any questions, and follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. Watch for our hummingbird displays up front. We have a huge of hummingbird plants in right now. Um, we're doing even the little signs for the kids. They can come in and color one and hang them up. So have a nice day, guys. Happy happy July, happy summer, happy 4th. Bye. See you guys.